Groovarelli in the building. Groovarelli. 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 We're fucking with Groovarelli. Got out that chain today, I swim and I ain't had no money. I hit the street today, I think no police looking for me. She fucked my head up, I still think about the way they dummy. I play the game, but don't try to do me like no dummy. I ain't gon' lie, this time I can't even say I seen it coming. When I was down, I swear nobody, they ain't give me none. Hey yo, I'm a money. We shoot right now with Blue Rally in NYC. I put my heart inside the shit, I gotta give me something. When I was down, I swear nobody, they ain't give me none. I started making music in the fifth grade because there was a beautiful girl who rode my bus. She was very sexy. I loved her a lot. Um, and we listened to Kanye West, 808 and Heartbreak together. And motherfucking, we would start, we would start on the first song. By the time it would end, it would be on Robocop. And that was a song that we would always get off the bus to Robocop. And then, oh, we always used to listen to, oh, Say You Will too. And I have wrote my remix to Say You Will. And I rapped to her on the bus, and then she kissed me. And ever since then, I just kept making songs every day. I used to remix Lil Wayne. I used to remix all that no ceiling shit. All that shit on no ceilings, I was rapping on that shit. Oh God, that's the first nigga who ever got me into like writing shit every single day. Kanye, Wayne, and I started fucking with Eminem. But it's just about like, it was just a feeling that you feel when you hear somebody snapping hard. You can really relate. When you young, you a black kid. Like, it's not that many people that you look like that, look at like that. So I, I fought with the rappers. Like, rappers help you grow up when you're a young man. Okay, that's why I got into it. You be dumb, me wrong, go way back. If you gonna lie, little baby, just say that. Fuck that bitch, I want my payback. You should be one more. The main inspiration, I would say, in my music, artist wise, would be Drake. I follow Drake. Drake, the first rapper that I ever seen from the beginning to the end, be the first rapper who I followed from from the jump of that shit. Looking at Drake and how he created the entire environment really is what will push me to make my artistry the way that it is. Like I like the vulnerability of the music. All the artists that I listened to as I got older, I realized how vulnerable they were inside of their art. Like Kanye West really gives you a piece of himself that you really wouldn't see if you just talked to Kanye West. You, you grow up feeling like you know the rapper. You grow up feeling like you know the person who the rapper is. Those are the niggas who got me in that shit. All that I take back. Fuck the ending, no, I don't play that. If you gon' shoot for a nigga, better spray that. Can't go home, so home with a hater. But it's no. I portray my vulnerability in my music in regards to like things. I don't, I don't speak on things out loud unless it's on the track. Like a lot of the stuff that I go through, you only really know about that shit if you listen to my music. It's like the music is like out of the shell. When I'm when I'm on the beat, I'm not rapping from myself like I'm really rapping through just straight soul every single time. Nigga get nigga black out in the stool. Niggas going to stool just black completely. You I know you hate that. I don't wanna die for your love girl I'm down for your love girl I'm it's like a mix between all that shit like recently every song I've been making I just be in the studio punching in just punching every single bar. But I started off being a writer like that's my my, my strong suit and my artistry is the fact that I can write a good song. Really my new shit is like just off the head like really no formula. It's a pattern but ain't no formula like I'm going on some shit but I ain't, I don't have not approached any songs the same way in the recent months maybe even years. I've just been going crazy on that bitch just. Parties. White people love me, they think that I'm gnarly. White bitches on me, they think that I'm racist. I like bad bitches from. Besides my brothers, you know what I'm saying? People that I, I, I started this with. My family, my Rich by 25 family. My boy Asa, Purple for Numb. That's my dog. That's like. That's somebody that I've been out of eye with this shit from the beginning. We started this shit together. We're gonna end this shit together. That's point blank. Motherfucker. In the league we in, it's only a couple people I can really align myself with and see myself even putting my name next to, like. I rock with a lot of artists. I love a lot of artists out of Atlanta. I fuck with Surf, Surf Skirt. I fuck with Soda Man. Soda Man, like, they run in Atlanta. They, they doing stupid things in Atlanta. BK the Ruler, really the underground champion. She won the underground already. You feel me? Like, more different races. I know the money, you look like a stranger. Bitches, they talking, they call me a player. People start changing. This will put me on, like, Nigga, if this nigga know me, he know because I made that shit, you feel me? I did that shit in 2016. That bitch blew up, got me 800K off the muscle. No promo, nothing, just, just off the strength. The majority of my fans right now, they know me because of that shit. 
when I got bangers, so I got some shit in the cut. I got too much music in the cut. So much in the cut. So much. I'm your player. Sing like R. Kelly and ball like a Laker. Niggas. Bruh, SoundCloud got all the other niggas. Everybody is on SoundCloud. If you find you on SoundCloud, you got your chance to blow up. Period, bro. That's just the game. But I started on SoundCloud, like, I started on SoundCloud back in like 2014 or 15. Like, I, I remember when going on SoundCloud, like, motherfucker, you, it was only desktop version, no app, nigga, no web application for that bitch at all. I use SoundCloud, like, nigga, that's the underground. That's the real underground. That's where everything at. The best rappers on SoundCloud right now with a thousand plays, that's facts. The best rapper you will ever find is on SoundCloud right now with less than 10K views on his own, bro. I'm telling you, the new generation of young niggas and the new generation of music is on the web, bro, period. SoundCloud really created a whole lane for niggas. Fucking Slay World, Nila World, oh God. I might want the diamonds and the finer things, but that's not- I believe that if you are fired and you deserve success, regardless of the medium that you go through, you will get that shit. If you believe that oversaturation in music is what's causing your failure, then rethink that shit, you feel me? Rethink that. You gonna get your wave if you own your shit, and that's facts. Like, the accessibility to music is, is good. It just means you gotta bring more to the table in order to be looked at. Like, you really gotta step up your game. It's not just about rapping no more. It's not just about making the melody no more. You gotta bring your character to the music. 99% of the rappers that are up right now are characters. They're, they're, they're costumes and shit, bro. If you ain't like that, you ain't, you ain't on that. But still, it's, it's a way, it's a way that this shit go now. Not the only thing inside of me. I got such big dreams on who I'm supposed I've been in New York for like, probably like a week. Really, I've just been vibing, like, making little networks. You know what I'm saying? I've been fucking with my boy, Glenn Brown. I fuck with my nigga, Glenn. Really just, um, Enjoying these protests and whatnot too. I haven't been able to step out to one, but I've been going to locations of everything. I like to come to New York City because of the history of the boroughs and the history of the, the art scene that's out here. It's like, I see it as every single person that I look up to came to New York before they had a break. And I look up to my motherfucking self at the same time, so I'm in New York right now for the catch mine. I'm gonna get mine. I'm sorry, if I'm in New York is like, a million people, I meet 20 people a day, every day. And everybody got something going on that's hard, like something going on that's fire. I like, I came to New York specifically just so I can just have a little escape and just tap my mind back into the, to the rhythm of what this shit going like. Cause I was in the cut for a little minute. I was in the cut of the music shit for a while. Got that just marinating and cooking a lot of shit up, making a lot of different networks. But um, the rest of 2020, bro, it's, it's gas, all gas. I'm just getting gas the whole fucking way. Supposed to be. I just can't look back and say they chose for me. When I first started making music, I didn't even do drugs. I didn't even smoke weed. I didn't do no acid, no shrooms, none of that shit. I barely even drunk. Like at this point, the drugs and the music, like I wouldn't even say the drugs play a deep like a heavy role in my shit. Like I don't even be fucking up myself up on drugs. Like I just smoke weed and like do shrooms and shit. Like really, I'm an all natural nigga. Like I like to just be. I like the trip, but nothing, nothing crazy, like. I'll do everything that my name was meant to. Getting money, make Motherfucking. First psychedelic I ever did was motherfucking acid. And I took two tabs at one time. I was on the river, on the motherfucking boat. High as fuck off that shit. Looking in the water, thinking I was gonna see some wild ass shit, but I didn't see fucking anything. Turns out the fucking first two tabs I took was fucking research chemicals and I was just in my brain going insane for like fucking three hours bro. I was in that bitch losing that shit. But then after that I got fucked up off the acid. I was doing that shit every single day for weeks though bro. I was fucking myself up on that shit. I'm like okay. First time I found acid I was like doing that shit every day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row, nine days in a row. I was with some people who went crazy though. I was with some people who lost their fucking mind with that shit. Still not the same to this day, but I remain look, I remained in that bitch. The acid could have fucked my mind. Acid tried to take me for that trip on God. The acid really tried to take me somewhere where I couldn't get back, but I fought the fuck out of that change is what I'm into. I guess that I'm the one that had to make it real. Man, first time I did acid and I had a bad trip, I was gonna be like, I'm never gonna fucking do this shit again. But then I found out about this shit called DMT. 
Once I found out about DNT, that's when I was like, bro, I'm back in the fucking game. I, found, I met a nigga at, look, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I met this nigga at Lil Yachty in Playboy Cardi video shoot, right? He was like, yo, man, I got the fucking psychedelics and he, I got this research permit that fucking allows me to grow all these fucking shits. And I'm like, but no, the fuck you know. So I link up with this nigga the next day. I link up with him and shit. And boom, this nigga got a closet full of little boxes and shit. And he got, he got shrooms growing in these little boxes, like mad shrooms and shit. And he got this little powder. I'm like, yo, what is that? He's like, what do you want with that shit? I was like, bro, what the fuck is it? He's talking about some this DMT. And I was like, bro, I've been looking for this shit forever. And then so we had a little set up a little room and shit. Got there, put some candles up. I had smoked the DMT out of a little bowl. Like, I lay back, I hit that shit, I said, <sighs> Blew that bitch out. When I blew it out, I, still, I got that laid up on the bed type shit. Motherfucking, it was like I was Danny Phantom. Bro. It was like I walked out my motherfucking body. It was like I was seeing shit that looked fucking insane. I was seeing shit that if I try to describe this shit, niggas would think I'm fucking lying about everything I'm saying. Like it wasn't even sound real. I know I just looked at my man's who I came there with. I'm like, I'm not. I'm about five foot six, bro. This nigga about a little bit taller than me. I was looking at this nigga. I swear to God, this nigga was like seven feet something. Nigga was looking huge as fuck, bro. I also had went outside. I had went outside on the DNT. I was looking at the trees and shit. I swear to you, I could see the energy from the sun go into the tree. And then, no, no, the energy from the sun, yeah, go into the tree, into the ground. I could see the roots, everything up in that bitch. Then I seen a motherfucking a yellow ass patch of dirt on the ground. And I was like, yo, why the fuck is that shit so dead? Like, Goddamn, my man was like, oh yeah, I buried my dog right there. And I was like, yo, why the fuck can I look at the ground and see that there's something dead under this bitch? I was tweaked off that shit. I'll never forget that shit. But it did reset my brain. Like, it formatted my brain 100%. All the shit that I was angry about and fucked up about once I did that DMT was like, I forgot about all that shit. I don't even remember what, I, what the fuck I was mad about at all. But that shit only lasted for like 10 minutes. It lasted for like 10 minutes, but I swear I was on that shit for like two hours, bro. I promise you, I will never forget that shit. DMT the best psychedelic. I recommend that a lot of people go in and fuck around and do that shit. Fuck around with the DMT or the ayahuasca, even the shroom. Cause that shit transformed my mind. That shit got me right. Sweet talk. Stop sweet talking it. Tell him how you feel. Tell him how what kind If I can smoke a blow on any motherfucking body, it'll be my nigga Malcolm. I'll put my, yeah, my nigga Malcolm X, yeah, I'm like that. I'm on my bullshit, 100% black power shit, on oh God. I wasn't supposed to be here and I made it still. Never hold me down. My musician name came from my beautiful and amazing mother. She named me Armani, and I kept it, and I will always keep it. I will go by this. I will never give myself another idea. Mother, I love you. You're the greatest thing that ever happened to me. You're a beautiful and strong woman. You made it to the man I am today. I will always respect you. I wanna pull up in robberies and ranges. Niggas be talking, but I never say shit. Talking that cash. I don't know. No, you was listening to that. Oh, yeah, that Bobby Smurda. Oh, when he said, uh. I feel like I'm Tom Cruise. But bitch, I'm Bobby with that too. Oh, that shit be so right. <laughs> Motherfucker, yeah, that computer's got that Roddy Rebel, got that Bobby Schmurner. I'm in New York City, so you know I gotta play all that shit. But really, really, I wanted to play that Pop Smoke. I'm sure I've been trying to play that Pop Smoke, bro. I want that new album to drop so fucking bad. They say you got the song in there with Youngboy. I'm finna bump that bitch every day. I listen to that shit all day. Pop Smoke and Youngboy is gonna be the hardest song to ever drop in the street. Ever. I'm gone. I used to call you family, and you barely know me now. I can see the. Hey, look, if you know me, bro, and I know y'all motherfuckers gonna be watching this shit. If you know me for real, bro, and you really lurking on my page trying to check out what the fuck I'm doing, just know, bro, I'm gonna slap the fuck out you. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, when you watch this, you're gonna be, you're gonna be passing the little phone to your man. It's like, yeah, bro, he owned us. I'm gonna slap the shit out you, bro. And you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. I promise you, when I catch you, bro, I'm gonna do you the worst way. And you know what your name is. Don't, don't, even, don't even try to hit me later like, am I talking about you? Because you know. You know exactly what's going on. You thought that shit was sweet. I promise you, you hurt. You X'd out. You get in a fucking boot. I promise you that shit. Difference in what makes us happy. First I had a dream and then I made it. People might not know, like, I might look short in interviews and shit, but I'm really six foot six. A lot of people, a lot of people might not really understand what I mean by that, but yeah, I'm standing tall. Um, people might not also know this, motherfucking, 
if you if you understand Motown, we from Detroit, you know about Detroit, you know my old Motown. Mark the Reeves and the Mandela's. Mark the Reeves, I'm a direct descendant. Yes, sir. That's my family member. When I go to the family reunion, I see Mark the Reeves. I'm living like that. Um, I guess it's just in my blood all the way. Happened. I came through the struggle, I came out the mud. <laughs> if it was the purge, the first fucking crime I do. All right, look. When I was in Atlanta, bro, during the riot, this motherfucking police had grabbed my motherfucking head and pulled my dread out my motherfucking head, bro. He took my shit out, and you ain't get away with it, bro. <laughs> it's not over with. When I find you, bro, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna show you some shit you've never seen before. And you thought you was tough. When you was about six foot something. You grab my motherfucking ponytail like you was finna do something to me. But if them niggas ain't come over here and free me and unarrest me, you might have tried to hurt me, bro. And I feel like if I ever see you, I'm gonna notice you. I will. And I'm gonna get you down bad. I'm gonna put you in the place. Hey, violence against police is violence. That's the right thing to do. Keep going. Then I made myself a remake who I was. And that's the reason why these niggas. I was on an island forever. I'll bring um, a beautiful, sexy queen with the white toes. Um, I'll bring fucking, fucking, I don't fucking know, bro. A fucking island? I've never even been on a fucking island. And if I was stuck on that bitch, I would literally just bring shit to get me off the island. Nigga, I just bring a fucking boat so I can go home. And then I'll bring a fucking some food so I can have something to eat while I'm on the fucking boat going home. And I'll only bring the girlfriend so I can have sex with her while I'm on the boat going home. Truly. Fuck that. I'm not getting stuck on that bitch. Niggas fear me. Yeah, I got the vision. I just see it clearly. I'm a pizza nigga. I eat pizza every fucking day. And I will never stop that shit. Pizza's the food that I eat. I do that shit every day. Cheese pizza? Actually, I was, finna, I was finna go crazy. Yeah, I fuck with the cheese pizza. I fuck with cheese pizza. I can't, I fuck with the pepperoni, but I don't do the swine no more. I'm trying to leave myself up there. I'm really trying to get right, you know what I'm saying, get better. I don't do the sausage yet. I mean, I will, but I'm dead nigga. Hey, bitch, I'm rich. Plus, I'm super elite. Now she wanna I, I need 50 songs with Youngboy. I need 100 songs with NBA. That's it. If me and NBA Youngboy had the collab tape, I promise you that'd be the hardest joint mix tape ever of all time. That bitch should be harder than watch the throne. Oh God. I'm telling you, me and Youngboy is fast with anyone. Facts. I might fuck around against Drake or some shit too. Matter of fact, yeah. No. Nah, I'd rather have some shit with Wabi right now. Yeah, I'll pick YB over Drake still, bro. That sound crazy as fuck. I sound retarded saying that shit, but oh god, bro, I fuck with your boy too much. These rappers don't come near me. I'm number one. Yeah, I'm a no. Actually, I believe this. I believe that um, there's a new stand that an artist is supposed to be taking right now, right? I believe that an artist is a reflection of the times. And right now, we're going through some trying times. I wouldn't believe myself to just be a rapper who raps about himself or rap shit, like or anything like that. like. Fucking, I believe in uh, social reform. I believe that there should be a dismantling and an abolishment of the current systems right now that are not serving the people. I believe that shit, if I even had a large amount of money or like that when I get to where I want to get, I know that I'm, I would just like to start the fire that changes this shit, whatever the fuck's going on. Whatever the fuck this shit is, bro, we gotta get it. I'm, I'm, I'm heavy into the esoterics, into spirituality, you know what I'm saying? And things like that. I'll fuck with it. Like, I've been in my brain for a long time. I've been learning different walks of life and understanding different spiritual systems for a minute, you know what I'm saying? Like, I fuck with Kabbalah, Gnosticism, Agalah, those type of things. Like, I like to test my brain. I like to put my brain in places where motherfucking, motherfucking, I just gotta get myself on that, man. I like to. Just like to learn different shit. I'm a learner, like I consider I consider myself novice historian, bro. I know some alternate history. I know some alternate facts, bro. That's my main bag. But I don't be I don't I don't be preaching it. I just keep that shit to myself. That's that's what I indulge in when don't nobody be around. When don't nobody be around. I'm looking at the alternate facts, like I just wanna see what's going on for real. Fuck the deep state and fuck the cabal. Yes, sir. Fuck them. Fuck the Zionists.
raw dead. We gotta get them out of here too. And the reptilians. <laughs> get the reptilians gone. Had to make it real. I wasn't supposed to be here and I made it still. The first day of protest in Atlanta was the fucking craziest day of protest. I mean, of any, I swear to you, any state, bro, that shit had to be the craziest shit, bro. Ah, me and my mans was like front line of that shit. We were front line, like, seeing the police right there with the motherfucking, uh, with the riot gear, with the little guns, with the tear gas and shit, shooting niggas with the rubber bullets and all that shit. Motherfucking, bro, goddamn. So crazy that shit, that happened, like, we had gotten to a big ass beef with the police, like, Niggas was going stupid at the police, throwing rocks at their ass and shit and all this shit. And they threw a big ass tear gas at us. And everybody had ran the other way. The police stayed right there. We was in the intersection. And this car had drove through. He was bumping Chief Key. They were bumping Chief Key. And everybody was like, oh yeah, we turned up. We won that bit. Boom, boom, boom. Like we was lit out that shit, like going crazy. Then the police had just threw another tear gas. Shut that bitch high as fuck in the air. Boom. I was standing in the bed of the truck. Motherfucking. The tear gas had landed right in the bed of that shit. I had tried to put my shit over my face. Motherfucking, it got all over my shirt and everything. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't see. I jumped out the back of that bitch, I started running straight. Couldn't see nothing. I fell on the motherfucking ground. As soon as I was about to get up, like I stayed on the ground for like 10 seconds, as soon as I was about to get up, motherfucker, I stood to stand up. I got put back on the ground, I looked back. It's a motherfucking police with all the black riot shit on, bro. Nigga had got them. Had me on the ground, but it was another nigga right there too. Motherfucker, I was on the ground and shit. Nigga, I was trying to get away, but nigga had grabbed my hair in a full ponytail, like had my whole shit like this. I'm in there like, bop, bop, bop. I couldn't see. I told the nigga, I was like, bro, I can't even see, bro. Why, why the fuck you hit me, bro? And then motherfucking, this black lady, this black woman came over there and uh, she was pouring some water in my eyes. She was like, stop hitting them. You can't see and all this shit. Goddamn, but then by this time, it was three police and they was telling the lady, get off me and everything. It was like, yo, get, like, get away from me. Get the fuck down. Get away from this shit. They were trying to grab her too. But then it was like four black niggas, like, four, like four men came. One of them had nurse on them, swollen shit. Came over there, <clears throat> pushed the shit out of the police. Goddamn. And then once he pushed that one police, all they had was the shields and shit. They ain't even had a little guns. And a lot of the police was in the other direction trying to get the niggas who's already running away. So motherfucking, we had got away. We ran away. Except one nigga, he had went back to jail. Like, he got locked up trying to save me, bro. But the black woman had got his name. His name was Rocky. We had got him out of jail. But I was running up the street, bro. No shirt. Lost my phone. Lost my wallet. Fucking fucked up. Dread. Mock lift. Missing out my motherfucking head. I seen this shit on the ground. I was standing up. I was running up the street. Like, Damn, they got me fucked up. And I had lost everybody I came with. Like, Hundred so people on the streets. Probably thousands of people on the streets, but I ain't see nobody I came with. I was running up the street. I stopped walking for one second. I looked up. I look up in this motherfucking I see Brent Fires. Like I'm see, I just look up and I see this nigga. I'm like, bro, is this bro, this is nigga Brent. Nigga face mad symmetrical type shit, right? Motherfucker, I look at this nigga, I say, bro, let me use your phone right quick, goddamn. Police should fuck me up. Let me see that shit. And then motherfucking he said, I was saying that's bad. Goddamn, gave me that bit. I had called my shorty, I was like, yo, come pick me up, bro. I'm getting fucked up right now. Like, I'm getting fucked up. And she was blah, 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 blah. I told her to come give me, screw me all this shit. I had walked away from Brent, motherfucking, like five seconds later, he was like, yo, come back. Got them, and my shorty's on the phone again. She's like, oh yeah, we're on the way, blah, blah, blah. And then the police had came down the same road we was at. And then I just seen this nigga Brent <clears throat> going this way. Everybody was going that way. Like everybody just started running down that shit. Nigga had the brazen and all, like, and then we was in this building called Witch Witch that was looting that shit and went in the bathroom. That's what the bleasy out there do. Favorite fires in that shit. It was fire. It was fire. And I took the selfie with, bro. I took the selfie because I know the hoes wouldn't believe me. The hoes was not going to believe me. And then I had got to back to the apartment after walking for hours and hours and hours, bro. I was walking for like three hours. And then got them. I got back to where I was at. And I was like, I told these girls I was with, my short, my friend, Destiny. I was like, shout just seen Brent. First thing this girl gonna say is, if I seen him, I would have sucked his dick. The first thing, she ain't say her money, are you okay? Are you alright? What's all this shit? First thing Shorty said is if I would have seen Brent Fires in the Black Lives Matter protest, I would suck his dick. End of story. Shout out Brent Fire. <laughs> Shout out Brent. <laughs> Justice for Breonna Taylor, fucking, matter of fact, how about this, ain't even no justice, no peace, bro. You see, get them niggas, I'm gonna get my motherfucking self. All right, yeah, arrest all three of them niggas. Arrest all the fuck niggas who killed Elijah McCain, too. All y'all, y'all got some shit coming for you, I promise you, the shit's not sweet, you're not finna hide from it, you're not finna escape that shit, you're getting fucked up. 
all cops are fucking bastards. Fuck them. Dismantle white fucking supremacy. Abolish prisons. Abolish exile. Fuck all of that shit. Everybody go tap in to Angela Davis. Learn yourself something. Teach yourself some shit. If you're a black man, study Marcus Garvey, Huey P. Newton, Fred Hampton. Learn your fucking self. There's more than Malcolm and Martin. Get back to the motherfucking roots. Black nation state. Understand this shit. Maintain your wealth. Spend your motherfucking money in your own goddamn community, bro. Do not fuck with these corporations who don't give a fuck about you. Do not work no job for nobody who don't give a fuck about you, bro. Maintain your own wealth. Create your own environment. You are the master of your own destiny. We're black people, bro. There's an offensive force going against us, bro. We have to play offense and defense at the same time. Love your brothers. Love your sisters. Take care, uh, take care of your queens, bro. There's no room for homophobia, misogyny, the patriarchy, or any of that fuck shit. Transphobia, get your fucking brain right, bro. There's one fight. There's a fight against the enemy, bro. If you're not fighting with us, you are fighting against us. And that's the end of the conversation. You don't have to be, you don't have to force yourself to learn this shit, bro. You don't have to force yourself to change your mind, bro. There's a clear direction that is given to you right now. You have the, the opportunity to right yourself. You have the opportunity to fix yourself. You have the opportunity to realign your path with what is meant for you. My name, they stole us. African Americans, we are the only part of diaspora who's been stripped of our language and our culture, bro. We started all over from the beginning inside of a new territory. We're not, they're not here to protect us. Nobody's supposed to be protecting us. We are our own protectors. Your brothers and sisters are the only people who are gonna look out for you. These people don't give a fuck about you. Love yourself and your fucking people. That's it. Don't let nobody tell you shit at all. We're black. Stand the fuck up. I don't give a fuck. Fuck that job. Fuck that job that you think you need to put food on the fucking table. Ain't gonna be no motherfucking table if you keep listening to that bullshit. Wake up from the deep state. And fuck the cabal. And stop playing into race politics. And stop playing into homophobia. And black men, get rid of the patriarchy. The patriarchy isn't meant for you. The patriarchy has nothing to do with you. The patriarchy tells you that the white man's better than you, that the white woman's better than the black woman. You're stupid if you believe that shit. You're dumb if you're a misogynist and a black man. And you're a stupid, dumb, fucking idiot if you're a black man and homophobic or transphobic. You niggas be gay anyway. You niggas be scared to be gay. You, you niggas scared to be attracted to somebody that you're already attracted to. Get the fuck over it. Period. Stop fucking hitting people. Stop stealing shit. Actually, matter of fact, keep stealing shit, bro. Steal as much shit as you fucking want to. And when they get your brothers for stealing, bro, you better beat them police up. Oh God, I'm wanting to get that shit off my chest. It's got a text that said, my God, I'm so into you. And every conversation starts to- Look, bro, I ain't even wanna do y'all like this. I ain't even gonna cap to y'all. I got something in my bag. Yeah. I got shit in my motherfucking bag. You might not know that shit coming. You might not know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I promise you. In about two, three months, you're gonna be looking at me different. You're gonna be feeling me different. I'm gonna be around some motherfuckers. She didn't think I was gonna be around. But I'm gonna be that bitch. Watch me. In the next couple months, bro, I'm gonna do something amazing. Y'all gonna be mad. And you specifically, bro. You. You know who I'm talking to, bro. I know you about to be mad. Don't say shit to me when I'm rich. I promise you, don't say a fucking thing to me. Bitch. Yeah. Yo, my name is Armani. Right now I'm in New York City. And this is Ooh, Ooh, really. I feel like an interview. The girl who used to look at me like, what are you thinking? She sent the naked picture caption, what are you thinking? I guess the table's turned, but you live and you learn. Everybody's got their time, but I'm not waiting my turn. My ex girl just.